Summary of Life After Life by Kate Atkinson In November 1930, Ursula Todd walks into a coffee shop in Germany at the beginning of the story. She sits down next to Adolf Hitler and has a short, polite chat with him before pulling out a gun and shooting him. Ursula is later killed by his henchmen after she was shot, and night falls. In February 1910, Ursula is born in the Todd House, also known as Fox Corner, in a London neighborhood. Both the local doctor, Dr. Fellows, and the town midwife, Mrs. Haddock, are caught in the big snowstorm that has hit the town. Her mother, Sylvie, and the Todd's maid, Bridget, try to deliver the baby as best they can, but neither of them is successful. Hugh, Sylvie's husband, is also away. He is getting his wild 16-year-old sister, Izzy, who got pregnant by her boyfriend in Paris, back from there. Ursula's umbilical cord is wrapped around her neck and choking her when she is born. She is dead. In February 1910, Ursula is born again. This time, Dr. Fellows gets there just in time and uses medical scissors to cut Ursula's umbilical cord, saving her life. Ursula grows up, but when she is young, she dies many times and is always reborn in the same place and same situation. When she is four, she goes to the beach with her family. Her older sister Pamela leads her into rough water, and she drowns. In her next life, she is saved by a man who is painting by the water and sees the girls wading out into the ocean. Maurice, her bigger brother, throws one of her dolls out of the bedroom window when she is five years old. She goes out the window, slips on some ice, and then falls off the roof. In the next version of events, Bridget comes upstairs just in time to stop her. Ursula also starts to feel like she's seen something before. In each new timeline, she feels a wave of fear before doing the thing that killed her in a previous timeline. This gives her the chance to try to stop some bad things from happening. For example, Bridget goes to London to enjoy the end of World War I with her fiancé, Clarence, and gets sick. When she gets back, she gives Ursula, who is eight years old, the illness, which kills her. In the next reality, she tries to stay away from Bridget, but her brother Teddy gets sick from Bridget and then gives it to her. In her second attempt, she tries to stop Bridget from going back into the house by leaving her a note telling her to stay at Clarence's house. This, too, fails. Ursula pushes Bridget in the yard right before she leaves, hoping that spraining her ankle will make her not want to go, but Bridget still goes. In her last effort, she pushes Bridget down the stairs, breaking her arm. This time, Bridget doesn't get the flu. The story moves quickly from the end of World War I to February 1947, when World War II is over. Ursula lives in London and has been through a long and difficult war. Teddy is dead because the plane he was flying crashed and burned. Sylvie is also dead. She killed herself because she was sad about Teddy. Ursula is sad too because her younger brother died. When the gas goes out in her building, she goes to sleep because she knows she will probably die if the gas comes back on. It starts to get dark around her. After what happened with Bridget and the stairs, Ursula, who is 10 years old, meets Dr. Kellett, a therapist. When she talks about her deja vu, he talks about rebirth and fate, admitting that sometimes bad things have to happen to stop even worse things from happening. When Ursula is 13 years old, she goes to London to see her Aunt Izzy. Izzy is now an independent woman who writes about modern women in a newspaper piece. Sylvie thinks Izzy is very careless because she got pregnant at a young age, and Izzy thinks Sylvie is very traditional because Sylvie thinks being a wife and mother is the most important thing a woman can be. When Ursula turns 16, Howie, one of Morris's friends, kisses her very forcefully, and Ursula lets him because she thinks it's a necessary step to becoming a woman. When Howie goes back to Fox Corner a few months later, he rapes her on the back stairs. Ursula doesn't say anything because she thinks it must be her fault. A few months later, she realizes that she might be pregnant. She didn't know that that's how kids are made, but now she does. She goes to Izzy's room out of fear that she can't tell her parents. Izzy says they have to get rid of the baby and takes Ursula to an abortion center, even though Ursula doesn't fully understand what that means. 
Ursula ends up in the hospital after her surgery. Hugh comes to help her and holds her hand as she gets better, but Sylvie is cold and uncaring because she thinks she is to blame for everything. Ursula doesn't go back to school after having an abortion. Instead, she takes a course in typing and moves to London. During this time, Nancy Shawcross, the Todd's neighbor, is killed as she walks home. Ursula meets Derek Oliphant while she is living in London, and they start dating. Derek makes her feel safe, and they got married soon after. But Derek starts to treat her badly right away, and one day he breaks her jaw, nose, and arm. Ursula runs away and goes to Izzy again for safety. She starts to get better, but Derek finds her and kills her by beating her. In her next life, Ursula hits Howie in the face instead of letting him kiss her. This way, she doesn't have to go through the rest of that painful story. Also, because she doesn't have the abortion, she can walk Nancy home and keep her from being killed. The book jumps ahead in time to the night before Britain declares war on Germany, which starts World War II. Ursula is seeing an admiral called Crichton, who is married. Ursula works at the Home Office, which is Britain's Department for Home Security. When the war starts, Crichton and Ursula break up, and Ursula starts going out with a young guy named Ralph. Ursula lives in an apartment building on Argyle Road that is directly hit by a bomb a year into the war. Ursula is hurt, and a relief team tries to help her, but she dies from her wounds. In the next version of her life, Crichton breaks up with his wife instead of Ursula, and she moves in with him during the war. But on the night of the bombing, she goes to see her old friends on Argyle Road and ends up in the middle of more damage. In Ursula's third war, she decides to spend the rest of the war as a nun. On the night of the bombing, she is feeling lonely and looks out her window to see a dog. She runs out to get the dog. She is saved from the bomb that goes off in the cellar, but during the storm, a wall falls on her and crushes her. Ursula takes a tour of Europe after college in her next life. She goes on a trip that takes her to Germany, where she stays with a host family and sees the Nazi party and Hitler rise to power. She married Jürgen, a German, and they have a daughter called Frida. In the Nazi party, Jürgen gets more and more important. As war seems likely, Ursula tries to take her daughter back to England, but Jürgen stops her. Instead, she becomes friends with Hitler and his lover, Eva Braun. When Frida gets sick, she even stays at their home in the country. Five years later, Jürgen is killed in an attack, and Germany is losing the war. People are going hungry and Berlin is being bombed, so things are bad. Frida gets very sick, and Ursula sees that the only way to keep her daughter safe is to kill her quickly. She goes to the pharmacy and buys two pills. She gives one to her daughter and takes the other one herself. Ursula and Frida die with their arms around each other. Ursula is back in England in her next life, but this time she is part of a rescue team that helps people during and after bombings. The bombs have had terrible effects, and the team has to deal with the fact that many bodies are missing limbs, people have parts of their heads missing, and, most sadly, babies are crushed by the wreckage. Hugh has a heart attack and dies during the war, and Maurice tells Ursula that Teddy's plane crashed in flames and that he is missing in action. Ursula's heart is broken by both of these things, but Teddy's death hurts her the most because she loved him more than anyone else in her life. Sylvie also kills herself by taking too many sleeping pills after Teddy dies. By the end of the war, Ursula is physically and mentally worn out from her rescue missions and the deaths of many of her friends and family members. Ursula goes to bed when the gas goes out in her building, but she wakes up before the gas comes back on, saving her life. The story then jumps to 1967, where Ursula and her nephew Nigel talk about how different the war might have been if Hitler had been killed before it started. After this talk, the story goes back to when Ursula was born. In this version of events, Izzy's baby, Roland, is raised by Sylvie. However, Roland drowns in the ocean instead of Ursula. On Ursula's 16th birthday, she is kissed by a new boy, Benjamin Cole. They start dating, but their relationship leads to Nancy's death again because Ursula doesn't walk Nancy home the day she is killed. 
Ursula is having lunch with Izzy one day when she starts to feel scared and goes outside. She runs through places she has lived in before, remembering more and more about these past lives. She trips and breaks her nose. On the street, she sees Derek Oliphant and runs away from him out of fear. She ends up in a hospital, where she talks to Dr. Kellett again about rebirth. After this conversation, Ursula knows what she wants to do. She learns how to shoot and studies German, and she saves money so she can go to other countries. She meets Eva Braun, who is 17, in Munich, a long time before Eva starts dating Hitler. Then, in 1930, Ursula shoots Hitler in a German cafe. She is quickly shot dead herself. In the second to last chapter, Teddy gets out of his burning plane and becomes a prisoner of war in Germany for two years. When the war is over, he gets back to England and is happy to see Ursula again. The last chapter goes back to the day Ursula was born, but this time it's about Mrs. Haddock, the nurse who couldn't get to the house. She is stuck in the snow and in a pub. The bartender tells her that she probably won't be able to leave for a few days. About the author Atkinson was born to a shopkeeper in York in 1951. She went to Dundee University to study English literature and got her degree in 1974. Later, she taught at Dundee, and in 1981 she started writing short tales. Behind the scenes at the museum, her first book came out in 1995. It beat Salman Rushdie's The Moor's Last Sigh to win the 1995 Whitbread Book of the Year Award. She is best known for a series of books about a former police officer named Jackson Brody. In 2013 and 2015, Life After Life and A God in Ruins, a book that goes with it, both won the Costa Novel Award. Atkinson lives in Edinburgh, Scotland. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.